know, I think that a couple of things come to mind just, you know, that are very clear. We have to increase the size of the Army. I mean, with, with, the, with, the, re, uh, uh, with the Renaissance, uh, the rebirth of the Southern Front with, uh, with Egypt, it's absolutely clear that uh, we, need, we need at least, you know, two or three more divisions. The more the merrier. We need to grow the IDF. That means no exemptions. It means uh, to bring in the Haredim, it means whatever it means, it means more tanks, it means we have to massively increase the budget, the IDF. We have to build our own platforms as well in order to diminish our, our, uh, our dependence on the United States. But we have to increase the size of the IDF, we have to do it yesterday. Um, and aside from that, you know, we have to recognize a couple of things. Israel is far more influential than we give ourselves credit for and far less influential than we'd like to believe. What do I mean? When we think about Hillary Clinton saying that Bashar Assad was a reformer, which she was asked about him last week, which is so shocking at the same time as he's gunning down his own people in cold blood, she called him a reformer. And this was based upon what? Upon the fact that for five minutes, for five minutes his father, Ten years ago, pretended that he wanted to have peace with Israel. And as a consequence of that bluff by Hafez Assad in 1998, still in 2011, under his son, who was, the, you know, who was Ahmadinejad's water boy and Hassan Nasrallah's uh, logistical base, and the home of Hamas and Islam Jihad and all the rest of them, on the basis of those five minutes that her husband lied that, that his father lied to her husband. Uh, she still says that Syria is, is an important uh, regime that has to be appeased by the West. This is shocking. Now, why is she able to do that? Because during those five minutes, Israel embraced Syria as a legitimate peace partner. So they're saying this is ridiculous. This man isn't serious about making peace. That is, the fact that Israel gave legitimacy to the Syrians and their bluff in the 1990s is what has given Bashar Assad the ability to uh, maintain Western support for his regime even after he murdered Hariri in Lebanon and, and, and now he's gunning down his own people and he was the way station for all the jihadists going in and murdering American soldiers and Iraqis inside of Iraq. So, you know, it's all because of Israel. We gave him legitimacy. And we don't realize that. If we hadn't done that, if we had responded to Assad Sr., the way that we responded to the fake Saudi peace initiative in 2002, when we said this isn't the peace initiative and stuff, uh, lying about it, nobody got legitimacy as a peace partner as a result of the Saudi plan, except maybe Tom Friedman. <laughs> it was because Israel didn't accept it as legitimate. And so we always think we need to do this, we need to do that. We need to stop giving legitimacy to regimes that despise us. And we have to start calling things by their proper name because we have far more power to confer legitimacy on these tyrants than we believe that we have, and we recognize that we have, and, and we have to understand that and use that power wisely. And we haven't been doing that, and that has to change. And the other thing, of course, is that we have far less power in the sense that you know, if Israel, in the midst of the revolution in Egypt, had announced, as Obama wants us to, that, oh, you know, on second thought, here, uh, Hamas, take Hebron. You know, here, Hamas, take the Temple Mount. You're right. It was never ours to begin with, right? This would not have changed anything in Cairo. It wouldn't have saved Mubarak. It wouldn't have blocked the Muslim Brotherhood from taking charge in Egypt. Nothing would have changed. It would have had absolutely no impact. If we had collapsed, if we had said, forget it, so we all want to follow uh, Helen Thomas's advice and go to Germany and Poland, right? <laughs> Nothing would have changed. And yet, we don't recognize that. That it isn't about us. It's about us in some things, but it's not about us in other things. And we have to recognize when it's about us and act appropriately and when it's not about us and act appropriately. But unfortunately, we seem to have the equation completely upside down. So those are you know, my thoughts about the nature of this. And the last thing that I'll say is that we just have to defend ourselves. We have to defend our rights. We have to defend our lives. 
And we have to be willing to call things by their names and, and mean it. When we say that the Jordan Valley has to remain in Israel for perpetuity, it's not simply because we can't defend ourselves with that. It's because it's ours. It's ours. Nobody ever respected a right that wasn't claimed. And we have to claim it and defend it and maintain our rights to it. This is, uh, you know, there are so many voices coming up against Israel, coming up against Jews asserting our rights, that, you know, when we find one another, people who are willing to step forward and say the truth to everybody and not tremble, not buckle, it means it means the world. So you know, here I am, back to where I started with Izzy Kaplan not being with us anymore, but so much being with every single one of us. Because one of the things that Izzy did, as Alone said, is he empowered other Jews. There was just something about this man, you know, that said, "Yeah, you go. You're right. Good. Keep going. That's right. You can do it. You can. You know, you can." And, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty strong person, no doubt about it. And I speak my mind, always have and always will. But that doesn't mean that sometimes it doesn't become more difficult than it is at other times. And when, even if, when you're strong and even when you really are willing to step forward, because that's just the kind of person you are, it still means an enormous amount to know that there are people who stand with you all the time. And I take it as a great testament to the strength of the Toronto Jewish community, that it produced somebody like Izzy, and that it produced all of you coming here to honor his memory and to listen to me speaking out about our rights. Because I know that having all of, having Izzy been a force in my life, even briefly, and having all of you being touched by him, and coming here to listen to me tonight as well is empowering to me, and I hope that I'm empowering to you, because the fact of the matter is that we have an enormous strength in our people, but we have to be willing to have our voices heard, and each and every one of us has a voice, and now is the time for us to be counted, because we have to keep defending ourselves, our rights, our land, because nobody will do it for us if we're not doing it. But if we all do it, then so many people will stand with us. So thank you very much for listening to me.